Hello guys, welcome to my in-depth review of the new Thermomix TM6. I know in my last video I've mentioned to you that I'm going to be testing functions over the next few weeks and that's what I've been doing and what I've been up to in the last couple of weeks. I've been seeing lots of amazing comments from you guys on what you'd like me to test as well. So I've been taking some additional features into consideration when preparing this review. This is a completely honest review of everything that I've so far experienced with the TM6. So I'll give you the lowdown of some of the new software updates, some of the new cooking functions and features, and also some of the hardware updates and extras that I thought I'd encountered over the last few weeks so that you guys have a really good chance to exactly know what this new TM6 is all about. Now let's start with some of the software updates and also new cooking functionalities because I think that's the thing that excites us all the most. All of this new sous vide and fermentation, all of that pops into our head and we go, wow, this is amazing. So let me tell you, I've gone through every single one of these new functions and tested each individual one to make sure I actually see whether those functions are new, whether they add any value, whether that's different, or whether it really does work in the way that they describe it. So let's start with the um, updated Cookie Do feature. So now you know that Cookie Do is essentially integrated into your TM6. You have it on the screen here. Instead of having to uh, buy a cook key, you now have it already installed on your TM6, which means you, all you need to do is log in and start, technically. What happened to me was, unfortunately, I think twice or three times already, I tried to log into my cookie do and it just wouldn't want to log me in. Resetting the password doesn't work sometimes and I actually had to reset my entire Thermomix once already. My mum has reported the same issue on hers and actually it seems like there's a bit of software bugging to fix and that's a bit of an annoying thing because imagine if you want to just make something really nice for tonight and you're standing there and have to fix that for the next half an hour. So it's a bit of a downer, didn't really like that. I love that Cookie Do is integrated. For people who are new to cooking, for people who want to actually experience some new details, new amazing recipes, get some cool inspiration, this is a wonderful function, but definitely needs some improvement on the software side, I think, in my opinion. I think personally, I've been almost most excited about these new cooking functions. So aside from the new software update with the Cookie Do, there have been some new updates with cooking functionalities. Now these have all been integrated into the machine now as preset modes apart from a few which I'll take you through. Um, if you basically scroll onto your screen you will see that there are some preset modes and one of the ones that I got really excited about was the fermentation mode. And I thought gosh exciting what are they offering me here this is incredible I love fermenting foods love making my own kimchi love making kombucha love making well I'm fermenting my sourdough starter really so I was all over that one until I discovered actually um, fermentation mode what does it really mean um, so far it means yogurt mode okay and this is just my honest opinion you do not need temperatures as high as you do use them here for yogurt function to ferment anything like kimchi or kombucha or sauerkraut anything over 28 degrees and you will lacto ferment something way too fast some bacteria even die above a certain degrees 30 ish degrees and for my sourdough start it's certainly not worth putting in water setting up my aroma, setting in my sourdough starter and then having to risk that my sourdough starter goes way too fast up and then falls again. So there's a, there's a bit of a problem here with the word fermentation. I think it's a bit misleading. We are talking about the same yogurt functionality as before. Yes, you can set it overnight. And the cool thing is you can put in your um, glasses. So what you could do is you actually portion up your yogurt individually and then overnight you can leave it in here for eight hours and it will slowly ferment, which is a wonderful thing for yogurt at around 40 degrees, I'd say I would certainly try that. I've successfully made it, it works really well. But I certainly would not recommend this to make kimchi or kombucha or sauerkraut or anything like it because they do not need temperatures as high as this. They're very, uh, these bacteria that actually develop during the lacto fermentation that you cause uh, actually really like it around 26, 28 degrees. They do not like it a lot higher than 30 and actually some of them will die above that. So when you do lacto ferment, 
I do not think that you need a thermomix for that. Do it by hand as you did before and leave it at room temperature. On a colder day, leave it in a slightly warmer room. That's all you need to do. So fermentation mode, in my opinion, I know I quoted this before, is a fermentation mode. It's basically a yogurt mode and it's the same mode as before. So let's basically stay really true here and say this is the same yogurt function as before only that you can now do it overnight in individual glasses. I think a lot of you have also asked me for is can you actually prove bread in there now? So I've been thinking about that for a while and just the same as with the fermentation of kimchi or kombucha and lacto-fermenting foods, it's the same principle behind that with fermenting um, bread. So when you are proving bread or whether you are making a sourdough bread, the ideal temperature should never be any higher than around 30-ish degrees. 26 degrees is a wonderful environment for your right bacteria to develop. When you are making a yeasted bread and you are proving it in the thermomix and you were to switch it on even the lowest temperature setting of 37 degrees, which you can, it will produce a too moist and also too hot an environment. So what will happen is your bread will really rise quite quickly and then it will peak very quickly and in the oven most likely it will completely lose its shape and go down flat. The same for sourdough bread. I like to rise my sourdough bread slowly. It's a slow process. It's not a fast process. It's not meant to be sped up like that because we are then therefore stressing out the bacteria in there. It will quickly go up and in the oven it will completely flatten out. So again, in my opinion, this is not a good environment for proving bread. Um, I would certainly still do that at room temperature. My ideal temperature for proving bread in, in my bread prover is around 27 degrees and that will always give me the results that I need. I never go above that and when I did in the past I noticed a huge difference in the baking when I put it in the oven and it just wouldn't develop in the same way. So can't recommend it for proving bread really and that comes from someone who absolutely loves her bread. So I wish that function would work but it's just a bit too high. Another cool function that they've now pre-programmed and actually set as a pre-programmed step-by-step -step is the pureeing mode, which is actually really cool because you know when you're making your soup and you're then having to go from speed four all the way up to speed nine or 10 to puree your soup in the right way. Now they've actually in this particular new model, TM6, they've just released this as a preset mode. So it, it goes up by itself and you don't have to do anything. Essentially you just dial in the um, 30 seconds or one minute, whichever it says in your recipe, and it then does the rest for you, which I found really useful. I've tested it, worked really well, and makes my life just ever so slightly easier at the end. Another really cool, and I think one of the most exciting functionalities that they released is the frying mode. And I think we all got extremely excited about that one. There were even rumors at times on the internet, does it actually deep fry? Well, unfortunately I have to bust that one straight away. It does not deep fry because first of all, you're going to have to put your safety on here so you couldn't drop in any food to deep fry. Plus the blades are moving, so deep frying would be highly risky and very dangerous. Also, it only goes up to 160 degrees maximum and frying usually happens around 180 degrees, maybe 175. So deep frying unfortunately doesn't work, but hey, we can still use our deep fry occasionally. And it's not that healthy anyway, so we shouldn't be doing that too often. Now, back to the actual frying mode. Um, the, the cool thing is the frying mode exists. The bad news is you can only use the frying mode if you are using a recipe that integrates the frying mode in the recipe on Cookie Doo. So for me, as a person who loves to experiment with food, who loves to just do her own thing, I have absolutely no way of using the frying mode. Now, of course, I did test it anyway, so I made a recipe that they've suggested on Cookie Doo where they've used the frying mode and I've done two different things. I've tried it with frying onions, so frying vegetables, and I've also tried it with frying beef mince. The problem we have here is that the surface area is very small. So when we are frying anything, we are not going to get that frying aroma all over and the browning that we need for the amount that we might want for our family. So great if you're one person, if you want to chop one onion and you want to fry it, you will release some frying aromas, which is really nice, but it won't necessarily brown in the same way. I didn't find there to be much of a difference between the frying before to what it is now. So the TM5, for me, fried in a similar way to the TM6, and that's due to the surface area of the mixing bowl not being wide enough. Imagine like a frying pan, it's quite wide. There's quite a lot of space for it to move around and actually sit still to then be turned by you. 
And in the thermomix the problem is that even though it goes up to the temperature it needs to, it just doesn't generate the same surface area and keeps rotating. So it, we're cooking it rather than frying it again. Um, I was a bit disappointed with that function. Um, the same it goes for meat. Uh, you cannot fry more than 300 grams, 400 grams of meat maximum. So imagine trying to cook for four people. If you are going to fry some meat, first of all, again, you're locked into any recipe that Cookie Do has produced. Um, Plus, if you are unlucky like me and you have a software bug where you can't actually register into your cookie do sometimes when you turn on your Thermomix, you cannot use the frying function at all. So I really do hope that in future software updates that they will be releasing an update that will not restrict us all so much being locked into cookie do and only the recipes that they, they develop because I mean, it feels a bit like they're babying me and telling me exactly which recipe to do and when to do it and how to do it. I'd like to be a little bit more flexible with that and I'd like to use my frying function however I like. But as far as the actual result goes, it was, for me, not much of a difference between the TM5 and the TM6 frying mode when I was frying onions or when I was frying beef mince. Another cool new feature was the sous vide mode that they've announced and that's really awesome because a lot of us have been experimenting with sous vide and if you haven't yet, that's something you can definitely explore. Um, and I've tested that out again. The sous vide mode is now a pre-programmed uh, feature just as much as the fermentation mode was a pre-programmed feature or the pureeing mode was a pre-programmed feature now, which is as far as these pre-programmed features go really handy because then you don't have to dial in you don't have to remember exactly how long something goes or what temperature you need to go on and for that fact the sous vide mode worked perfectly well it knew exactly how long it needed to be done and had a pre-programmed step which you can also alter again as you wish and as per your recipe and um, the only thing is there's no difference between that from the tm5 to the tm6 so there's nothing that's improved it's just that now it's a pre-programmed step so rather than it being a new function, I would say it's a new software update. One cool thing to add about the sous vide pre-programmed mode is that now you can actually change the temperature dial in degrees by degrees. So you can literally be as accurate as going, I want my sous vide steak cooked at 83 degrees rather than you having to go in five um, degree steps which you had to do in the TM5. So that's a cool new added feature that allows you to be a little bit more accurate with sous vide cooking and I know that's really important in sous vide cooking to achieve the exact right consistency and temperature which is a really cool feature. Another new feature that they've released as a pre-programmed feature is the kettle mode which again I thought actually was really useful because I actually do a lot of steaming in my Varoma and oftentimes they ask me to preheat the water, drop in the boiling water from my kettle so rather than having to use two devices because aren't we all about trying to scale down a little bit I have tried the kettle mode by just heating up the water and then putting on my veggies to reduce the cooking time and it works wonderfully the other thing is that if you don't want to use a kettle you can actually use these this kettle mode to determine the exact temperatures you want your kettle to stop at. So for example, if you're making a specific type of herbal tea or some green teas and some black teas, they all have different temperatures that they should be brewed at. And this one you can control with the Thermomix now, which is wonderful and a good feature to have added to their software update. For me, I think one of the most important new features was the caramelization function. I got so excited when I heard that the caramelization function is now in the Thermomix and that it can heat up to actually caramelize and that's wonderful because I got super excited about making finally the proper caramel I've always been longing for because I always burn it it never works out it's always a big mess it's always stuck to the bowl and it never really is actually right caramel so I went ahead and thought oh, I want to test that out straight away looking for that caramelization function only to find out that once again this is only on cookie do with a recipe that is locked into that cookie do platform so I went ahead anyway I tried that I made some honeycomb and I used the caramelization function which works perfectly well wonderful everything is exactly right and I am gonna keep testing this function but I think a downside for me is here, once again, I'm being locked in to using recipes that I don't necessarily want to use. So unless you um, are a beginner or you're just looking for a tiny bit of inspiration, that's fine. But if you are one like me who likes to experiment with their food, who likes to try out new things, who is a little bit more of a creative mind, who completely goes off recipes anyway, 
then this is going to be a bit disappointing for you just as much as it was for me and I really do once again hope that in future software updates this can be rectified. This is a software update for sure and this will have to be another software update if they wanted to rectify the frying mode as well as the caramelization function. Now to round that off the caramelization function I've also then tested the pre-cleaning mode which kind of goes hand in hand with the caramelization function because as soon as you've caramelized you want to always clean your mixing bowl straight away so Thermix have developed a preset pre-cleaning function which essentially means the blades will turn and also it will essentially detect how dirty your bowl is and will clean based on that now I've tested it after the caramel which is perfect and you can even add in some vinegar instead of some soap so that you can really clean it well when I tried it with normal soap after I had burnt some milk when I've made some chai latte, it did not do anything for me. It didn't change much and the milk was still burnt to the bottom. So I used my usual trick, used my little Euro scrubby and off I went. So it's a bit of a hit and miss with that one, I'd say. Um, caramelization function, top, but unfortunately only on cookie dew. The last new mode they've introduced is the slow cooking mode and I think a lot of us got quite excited about the slow cooking mode because now it's the opportunity to finally ditch that slow cooker and do it all in the thermomix. Prepare it in the evening, come back in the morning downstairs and your bolognese overnight is done and it's a wonderful ragu. That's all perfect and it does work and it does mean that you can actually cook for extended periods of time at a lower temperature and again with the preset mode, this one is not locked into cookie dew so you can determine your own mode you can again change the temperature adjusting to what you think is right for the particular recipe you're making. Now the problem with that is the blades actually don't stop turning. So when you are slow cooking, it will keep turning the blades. That means in the morning, if I'm going to make a chunky goulash, for example, or a chunky ragu, I'm going to definitely end up with shredded ragu, that's for sure. So I, there's no way that you can make those blades stop. They will keep turning and it will keep happening. So just adjust your expectation when it comes to slow cooking mode. Whatever you are making in there, I think it's wonderful for pulled pork. I think it's wonderful for shredded beef. Perfect for ragu bolognese that you want to have nice and fine. Um, also perfect for a normal spaghetti bolognese that you want to slow cook or some wonderful slow cooked uh, rice pudding. But it doesn't work for chunky pieces of meat. So you can't really make a stew in there expecting that the next morning that stew will still have chunky pieces of beef or pork or anything else. So having tested all of these software features, here are some of the hardware things that have changed actually, which I wanted to review as well. First of all, the new scales. I'm particularly impressed with the new scales. I think for me, that made a massive difference. We now have accurate scales to one grams and it actually works. It works perfectly well every time. I've tried it with minimal quantities. I've put it next to my really, really accurate, expensive scales, which I had to buy when I had the Thermomix TM5. I now don't need that anymore and it's wonderful. They work wonderfully every time and I'm really pleased with that. The other hardware feature that's new is obviously the integrated new display. I'm also really impressed with that display. I think it's, it's really good how you can really adjust your eyes to it very quickly. When you then go back to the TM5, it almost seems like this tiny, tiny screen. And I think that's something we adjust to very fast nowadays because you know new phones with bigger displays come out very quickly and we adjust just how we look at them. And for me that added new feature of this really big display alone was almost worth buying that new TM6 and I can imagine many of you have had that TM5 for quite a while currently thinking about upgrading. I'd say that display for me made it really really worth it along with the scales that was as a baker, an uh, absolute dream come true. Now the cool thing about those new scales is that actually I found when kneading, my Thermomix was a lot more stable than before. So they must have done some work to this um, to actually make it a little bit more stable, which is really, really positive. And again, versus the TM5 makes a difference and a gigantic difference versus the TM31. Another thing I found really great was that we now have a new button, which I find actually works much nicer. There's a tiny lag between you turning the blare button and actually the Thermix function and turning on, which means you have more time to get to speed 10 than you did before. And I really like that. I also find that the button just works a bit more seamless and feels a little bit more high quality. It's actually not that much bigger. It might seem like that, but it, I found it using it 
really nice. Another one that they've actually changed is they've added a better processor, which obviously allows us to store more recipes and also pr process things a little bit faster. Um, well, in the case of the software, that hasn't really worked out for me yet, but what did also happen is that I find that the Thermix is now more quiet. Whatever this has to do with, um, this might have to do with some of the external gadgets that I'm gonna review in a second, or something to do with uh, how they've changed up the, the entire functionality of this machine, but either way, it's a little bit more quiet, it's got a better processor, so it's overall a little bit more powerful without having to add more loudness to it. I have been asked to add this point uh, on by a few of you on the comments in my last video. What happens when you have a power cut? Does the bowl still release? And I've tried that and the bad news is it doesn't. So if you are midway through a recipe and you have a power cut, your bowl will be locked in. So unfortunately that hasn't changed, it's the exact same as before and that's a bit disappointing because that means if we are somewhere out camping and we are using our Thermomix, we're halfway through a recipe and there's a power cut, we will not be able to have dinner unless you can somehow magically find a way of pouring it out by lifting the entire machine upside down. I've also been asked to test whether you can still pour oil through the new measuring cup. Uh, I'll tell you something about measuring cup in a second. And the good news is, yes, you can. There are still enough little holes where you can still pour through oil so you can still make your mayonnaise in the same way as you did before. Before I take you through the gadgets or the external parts that I am reviewing as well, I just wanted to mention, if you are actually using the Thermomix now, I always found in the past with the TM5 that the lid lock release was a little bit slow. So once you stopped your program, it took a little bit of time until you actually released the lid and you could take it out. I found that's gone a little bit faster, so that's definitely improved as well, so thumbs up to that one. I'm also gonna take you through the new gadgets that come with the TM6, and I wanted to review those as well. I've been testing them extensively. Um, there's a new spatula that came with it, which I'm extremely happy with. It's much more flexible. I know I've mentioned this briefly in my previous uh, review, but that was just an overall and first impression. This one I have tested now for two weeks. I really like it, I'm really happy with it. There's also a splash guard, which has been added now when you are doing the frying mode. I found this one to be very useful. Um, this one is compatible with TM5, which means if you do have the TM5 and you wanna use a splash guard, once that accessory is released onto their shops, you can buy that and use it just as much, which is really cool. And the simmering basket, once again, is also basically compatible with the TM5. I found that again, I found there was a bit of a problem for me here. And that's the overall problem I've had, which was the overall message I got from the TM6, is this babying. So I am uh, I like cooking, I do a lot of that, and I don't need a company telling me exactly how to do it, because I spend a lot of money on my gadget. So in my opinion, adding a safety feature such as you need to have a lid so you don't overfill your simmering basket, or we can only allow you to fry when you use our recipes, is a little bit strange for me. I don't really like it. I don't really like that they have to tell me exactly how to cook because I'm a free cook and I like to cook however I want to. So that's just my personal little touch on the TM6. Um, otherwise, the measuring cup is a wonderful new idea and is now going to cause that thermos to be a little bit more quiet, also locks it in a little bit better and doesn't fall off when you release your lid, which is fantastic and again, compatible with the TM5. And that's my gadgets, I love them, I think they are wonderful, they've really listened to people, you can tell, they've really listened to feedback and they've also made it compatible with the TM5. Apart from the new bowl, which is a brand new bowl, so that means you cannot use your TM5 bowl on the TM6, you can only use the TM6 bowl on the TM6 and the TM5 bowl on the TM5. There is an added security feature underneath which makes things a little bit more safe and locked so you don't uh, risk actually having any spillage when you don't actually put your blades on properly. So that's another really good added feature and overall impression and overall review of the gadgets. One more thing I wanna say about the mixing bowl is that I found something really cool. Um, the mixing bowl now actually releases dough much easier than before. I don't know if you've ever used that function but I use this 
twisting the blade quite a lot when I release dough, especially bread dough. And I found now with the new mixing bowl that dough can be released much, much easier and much quicker. It's not as hard to twist it around, so you don't need any additional gadgets to do that. You can literally just do it by yourself. So that's a really, really positive up point for me as a really avid baker. Before I leave you guys to make up your own mind about the TM6, I wanna just say something else about the cookie dough function. So essentially, it's great that this is integrated and you have a cookie dough platform, but there's, a two, there's two factors really that influence this for me. Uh, one, you have to have a cookie dough subscription to use your TM6. If you wanna use any of those additional features such as the frying mode, or the caramelization mode. You cannot go without a cookie dough subscription and that means you are locked into subscribing every year to their platform, which in my opinion is not nice because I don't want to, because I want to make my own recipes. But hey, that's totally up to you. The other thing is, if you do want to uh, use the recipes, because we now have integrated Wi-Fi, that also means that you're gonna need internet in order to access any of those recipes, unless you download them. So if you are going to plan on going away, maybe on a camping trip, and you wanna use your Thermomix and some of the recipes, make sure to download them beforehand to have them saved onto your platform so that you can use this offline. That's not a problem, I've tried it and tested it, that definitely works and you can use them offline. It's just that it's something you need to remember when you have a, Th a Thermix TM6 and you wanna go away, just make sure you download them before. If you wanna see any more in-depth photographic evidence of all of this stuff that I've talked about, all of the individual cooking features that I've been actually reviewing, you can head over to my blog, follow the link below and find an in-depth review written up for you guys so you can refer back to it and that one's got some photos in it of all of the different functions that I've tested and I've taken some pictures to show essentially exactly what the results were that I've experienced during the testing mode. Right, now you've heard all of my individual points for this massive review of the TM6. It is a huge new product launch so I thought I'm going to give it the proper review that I needed. It's a completely non-biased review. This is something I haven't been sponsored for. This is completely just my opinion based on my experience that I've had over the last weeks using this TM6 and I'm really an in-depth user of Thermomix. I love Thermomix, don't get me wrong, but this is my honest review. In the next video though, I'm going to give you my final verdict, whether it's worth the upgrade for TM5 versus TM6. So make sure to have a look at that video and subscribe to my channel for more amazing Thermomix videos.